Welcome, Angry Sturgeon Lures World Headquarters, where today we're going to take this beautiful piece of ambrosia maple that I got from A&Q Hardwoods in Ohio, and we are going to be making some crankbaits out of it. This video, uh, I'm starting out with the lures already assembled as blocks. They've got uh, a whole series of internal components, depending on which model I'm making, which options. Weights, rattles, all manner of things. The inside, uh, the inside layer is poplar, and the outside is the uh, ambrosia maple. The first thing I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing on these is uh, locating the eyes. My uh, my wooden hostile herring model. I, I use a, a wooden dowel for an eye. It has to be located uh, pretty precisely to get the effect uh, that I want on the finished shaped product, and also to avoid anything inside. It's probably my my best piece of advice if you're looking to make make lures is to make your templates first. Don't ever don't ever make a lure and then try to go back and reverse engineer it. You know, after you discover it, this is the greatest lure that ever swam. And then you have to go back and make another one. So always when you're brainstorming or prototyping, always start with a template first. That way you can reproduce it. I have a lot of uh, boxes of templates. There's a little trick for uh, for my wooden dowel eyes. Uh, I found if I burn the burn the part of the dowel that ends up being on the exterior of the lure, gives a, a better definition, a little bit of eye shadow. We leave the center unburned for uh, press fit tolerance, and and also they're they're glued in also. Probably one of the handiest things to have in a, in a shop is a flat surface with sandpaper adhered to it. Everything needs to be square on a, on a lure. If the sides aren't square and you lose your parallel faces, then uh, everything else follows suit. And you end up with a lure that runs sideways. Or upside down. These lures are going to be a, a standard diving hostile herring model and uh, so I break out another template that's going to let me locate the uh, diving lip slot location. I use uh, circuit board lips on all my lures. They're yeah, by far the, the easiest to uh, cut slots for. They perform incredible and uh, they're very easy to shape when you're tuning the lure. We'll touch on that in a future video. The uh, band-aid on my finger is from a paint can and not from the saw. box store special band saw and it's uh, got a lot of miles on it. It's uh, not the most precise instrument in the world but uh, if you flip the lure and make your cuts from both directions it kind of averages out the uh, inconsistencies. Um, it helps you center that that lure slot has to be uh, as close to as close to square as you make it get. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, I usually do the, the curve part on my on my scroll saw. It's convenient. It's on my workbench. And it does a better job of cutting that contour in one shot than, than my bandsaw with the thin, the thin blade that's on it. The better I get this cut, the, the less work I have at the shaping stage. And it's just habit for me. It's yeah, a lot of the lures I, in the past I've cut exclusively on this saw. This is uh, actually my drill press. Uh, I have a spindle sander, I have a lathe, I have all this other equipment and any more there in storage and uh, I use my drill press for most of it. Just a, just a simple drum sander. Uh, let's, me, uh, let's me carve that belly, that belly shape. That's not in the template, that's all freehand. And then uh, around the corners and make sure everything is uh, is as smooth as I can make it. And once again I flip everything over. Okay, I know I'm uh, I'm square with at least one side and I was a little hesitant to show this this next piece of equipment, but uh, I've I've discussed it with some fellow lure makers who have asked pointed questions about it, and uh, I don't think it's quite cheating, but uh, it's not rocket science either. Uh, like certain models, this my main model exclusively. I I can use this jig, and it really saves a lot of time. And what it is is it basically just a gate that. Uh, Let's me put a quarter inch chamfer around the lure. We can't, of course, do an inside radius, so I'm kind of limited on uh, what lures and which parts of lures I can use it on. But it's nice because it gives a, uh, a consistent um, base chamfer to do the rest of the shaping from. Point of reference. This part I've uh, I've shown in one capacity or another uh, many times over the years. This is how I've been making lures for over a decade. is a, it's a rotating uh, sanding surface and molding the lures. This is a 50 or 60 grit aggressive drum, which is good for me. It works. It works good on uh, like this harder maple. It doesn't burn. It removes the material quickly. It's got a nice feel to it. Also, does a good job of keeping the fingernails trimmed. Yeah, this is all done by eye, by feel, to get the, the shape that I want out of the lure. Uh, it's got to be consistent on both sides, as close as I can get. This is an opportunity to kind of square things up if anything anything looks askew from differences in the materials. And people wonder why I would share so much about lure making and uh, really none of this is none of this is uh, top secret groundbreaking. If you want to make a, a lure like I make a lure then by all means uh, I have a feeling that if you want to make one to take fishing, you're going to find that by the time it's all said and done, it's a lot more 
a lot more expense and time than you had planned on. It's uh, taken a, over a decade of development to uh, to get to this point with this model, and uh, I get asked I get asked constantly at shows how long does it take you to make one, and so I kind of thought this video might kind of put that in perspective that it takes a long time. I've, I don't even I don't even think I want to know exactly how much time. Uh, there was a substantial amount of time before this video even started to get the lures to that point. And then there'll be, uh, there'll be even more time after this video ends uh, to tune them and shape the lip and get things squared and make them run true. And then on, uh, on top of that, packaging and, and everything else. And, um, when it's all said and done, I think it's a quite an investment time and equipment materials I'm not uh, really worried about anybody taking over my wooden crankbait empire because anything that you do with a crankbait has been done before you look back through the history of fish and lures and there's been some crazy stuff done and I avoided I actually avoid looking at other lures uh, I like to come up with things on my own. People will come up to me and say, hey, that looks like this lure or that lure. I have no idea what you're talking about. I uh, intentionally try to stay away from how to, uh, how to make a lure videos, but here I am making one. Four more to go. I do batches of five. Uh, five is what fits in my vise. Uh, generally, on the on my larger models, it's actually sets of four. And I do a lot of one-offs too, where I'll make a, a big lure, like a musky lure or something like that. And it's one lure at a time, but never more than five. That's so why, if you wanna, if you want a five pack of look-alike lures, I can do that. Any more than that, I kind of got to make a make arrangements for it because I, I really do move in move in sets like that. I'll change the center material after the five and move on. This is my finished sanding. Uh, most of the time I can use this wheel. Some of the woods are too soft for it, but this maple is really receptive to this. I'll uh, get a nice glass like finish when it's all said and done kind of helps me to to round things a little bit further this is the this is the part of the process where you don't want to be too aggressive because you can throw away a lot of lures at this stage if you get too get too good of a bite in fact a lot of them like the softer cedars and that I'll, I'll hand sand and skip this step but for this maple it works out beautifully Well, we prep the lure sl the lip slots and like I said I use a circuit board lip it's the only part of the lure that I still purchase and uh, even then I modify it but uh, everything else in the lure the hook hanger system the uh, everything involved I, I make myself or I've had designed and have made for me but uh, these are an off-the-shelf circuit board lip they're a little bit long for this model and this angle so I end up clipping off uh, clipping off a little bit on the end and then this is the only part where I use a two-part epoxy and uh, the reason being is my single component UV 
cure epoxy that I use on the rest of the lure won't quite, the UV doesn't penetrate the inside of the lip slot well, lip slot well enough for me. And uh, I just know from experience it's, it's something that you don't want to have a weakness on. This is my single employee, Millie. She did not lose her ear in a shop accident. She actually uh, was dropped by a hawk or an owl when she was a barely weaned kitten, and she likes to visit. Every lure is a signed piece of art. That every single one of many, many thousands I've made, I've, uh, I've autographed. lighter wood like this I'll I'll just use uh, I'll just use a ink uh, ink pen some of the darker ones I actually have to give them a coat and then uh, sign on top of the epoxy between layers with a with a white marker and then they get their first coat this is aluminite UV single component UV cure epoxy uh, I've used all sorts of epoxies over the years dual components and spinning on rotisseries and everything else and this is just what works best for this application for this size lure and this is my high-tech UV oven they'll set instantly but it cures in about 15 minutes with that with that, uh, with that light I've got. Then they get another sanding. And you'd be surprised how much it needs this sanding. The lure can look perfectly fine, and then you'll find all sorts of waves and imperfections. And the, the smoother and more uniform the out exterior of the lure, the better it's going to perform. The easier it's going to be to tune. You get flat spots or, or waves in it. It's going to affect the performance. And then a second coat. Some lures require several. And a lot of them with the material need holes filled and all sorts of things. My UV oven is, yes it is a barbecue grill. And a laptop power supply. It is, uh, it is a repurposed grill that was destined for the scrap pen. Let me clean off all the eyes, the excess epoxy. It's easiest to do it when it's warm. Once it cool off, it cools off, it's bulletproof, and, and uh, tends to be a little bit more difficult to work with. And the final stage is hooks. I use a, a VMC or equivalent 3X treble hook. Um, I could get fancier with the hooks, but years of years have told me that you know fishermen are particular about their hooks. They're going to change them anyway, and so I can't you know please everybody with hooks. I've had people request special hooks, but they're a very good hook. And you can change them. That's why I use the split rings. And that finishes it up. That's a crankbait. On to testing.